Real Business Owners. Welcome back to Real Business Owners Podcast. This is episode 30. This is Trevor Cowley. As usual, I've got my main man, Kel Goodman, with me. What's up? What's up? What's up? Hey, we have no idea what the hell we're going to talk about on this one because we just set up and we are in Malibu, California. Mm-hmm. And we're just going to kind of vibe it out and see see what happens. I mean, you know, a couple ideas of what we thought about talking about is just, you know, a lot of things come about in in opportune times, right? A lot mm-hmm. of people use the excuse, well... It's not good timing yeah. to do that, or it's not. It's never good timing, but yeah. um, I mean, we're in Malibu, California for a networking event as well as to record content for 2020 for uh, our accounting company, Easier Accounting. Mm-hmm. Yes, and this episode is brought to you by Easier Accounting. <laughs> Forgot to say that. Got to do a it's little promo plug. Um, but yeah, guys, it's what? Two weeks before Christmas right now as we're mm-hmm. recording this, so this will come out, I think, Oh, like a week before Christmas. Yeah, Christmas is on a Wednesday. Is it on a Wednesday? I think so. Dude, well, next one we'll have to do like a Christmas episode or something. I don't know. How, <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna do that. You know, um, <laughs> hurry and drop it before this one. I think this one would drop on Christmas, wouldn't it? Or would no, it? it wouldn't. It drop next week before the week before Christmas. That's what it will. I don't know. Uh, it might. This yeah, might be the Christmas one. Yeah, this will be on the 18th, and then uh, Christmas will be the following week. No, we've already recorded the one for the 18th. Oh, that's true. This is a Christmas. This is the Christmas Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry fucking Christmas, you guys. Yeah. Hope you guys that's had awesome. an awesome day. Uh, we're working. It's yeah. Christmas. We're working. So. Yeah. It's, it's just, it sounds <laughs> just like kidding. it. I won't be working on Christmas. Yeah. Hell no. My wife would kill me officially. Yeah. yeah. She's been very they, patient with me doing... We've been busy, man. Been, been busy. really, really busy. So. They already want to kill us. So, <laughs> uh, But we, we make sure that we tell them, you know, bear with us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the sun will shine yeah. on us one day in terms of yeah. we <laughs> it tell all the same stuff we tell you guys yeah just yeah exactly like, babe it takes time it's on the other side yeah exactly success yeah. is on the other side of all this crap. you've got to have <laughs> sac- you got to put in sacrifice we're just sacrificing now it for the like, dude we do we do preach that we in do. our homes mm-hmm. just as much as we do you know to you guys um but you know me and Kel were talking just out here when we were trying to find a good spot to to film the podcast um in regards to you know, spending money. Like a lot of people, you know, reach out and say, Hey, you know, my business is slow, this, that, the other. And I'm like, well, how much money are you spending on marketing or, you know, getting yourself out there? Well, I spend like 300 a month. And I'm like, if you actually think about that, you're trying to extract tens of thousands of dollars out of a $300 a month investment. Yeah. It doesn't really make sense. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we spent four or $5,000 just to come down and rent this house to film content and go to an event. And you know, you've got to be willing to spend. And I think that that's missing yeah. a lot. They wonder why they're not, you know, making money. And I ask what strategies you've, you've implemented or how much money you're spending on a monthly basis. And some of them say, you know, I post, you know, once a week on Facebook and they're not even spending money on it. They mm-hmm. post on their personal Facebook and in most cases, the people closest to you, like your friends and family, aren't your customers. I wish we had the old Facebook algorithm and the old Instagram al- Instagram algorithm where we could just get it out, post and share and build things more organically. They've obviously altered the apps to get your money to oh, yeah. to build your yeah. your marketing and get your leads and the things that you're after out there yeah. on those platforms. I mean, guys, it was designed by that from the get go, but yeah. you know they had to build up to that, and so you're going to have to spend a little bit of money to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. Um, but money's just a hard thing all around, man, it because is. you also need to be forcing some of the money that comes back in, into your future, um, you know, investment portfolios. You need to get your money working for you. You mm-hmm. need to invest more into your operations in order to expand your operations. And then you also have to have your, your cost of living covered too. You yeah. know, so it is hard. It's a hard balance, but we're risk takers. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, I, mean, I don't even think about it. When the, I don't even know how much we spent on this trip because I'm like, we, we wanted this setting. We wanted to mastermind with our own partnership. Yeah. We are also attending a mastermind down here. And <coughs> all those things cost money. You know, it, it, I just know it's for the better the company to take us to the next level. So we just do it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know? the real question is, is and, and we were talking about this prior to the podcast and Kel was saying, you know, I don't know if we'd be able to do stuff like this four years ago and you know, and my rebuttal to that was, you know, maybe we would be 
where we are today a year or two prior. You just never know. And it has to be a personal call. You know, like how bad do you really want to advance? Yeah. Even if you're in a really bad financial situation or you don't have a whole lot of money, should you be hoarding that money to pay bills yeah. or should you be utilizing that money to maybe try to advance yourself? Yeah. Those are the real questions that you have to ask. Yeah. And, and it gets scary in some cases, especially if you're a new business and you don't have access to a lot of money to spend it maybe on personal growth or masterminding or doing some yeah. of that stuff because there's no immediate return in, ba- in, in, in in regards to getting a customer, right? Right. It's only really personal growth and understanding maybe how to operate your business better. Mm-hmm. But in reality, if you could know how to operate your business better, you should be more profitable. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it, you can always change the perspective and say, I can't afford to do it. Or you can say, can you afford not to do it? All right. You know, some of those things, like if you're in that bad of a situation, you need to figure out a way to get money to invest, whether it's into marketing, whether it's into going into masterminds. And, and I think that we've grown a lot just in the last, Two, you know, the last years of, six to 12 months for sure. Oh, yeah, last um, year for sure. You know, I mean, the last couple of years, I mean, we did hire a videographer. It was been almost a couple of years ago. That was really uncomfortable. Dude, I mean, just taking four years ago in, into our new office space, bro. That, that was uncomfortable. I was scared. I know. That was a big jump for me. And dude, you know what? I, realized? I was surprised by that because usually you're pretty good about, you know, investing, investing. And I remember saying, I, I dude, let's go into a bigger office, go to a nicer office. I think yeah. more revenue will yeah. come out of it because we're putting the employees in a better environment yeah. and it has panned out. Dude, people come in our office and the deal's closed before we even talk. Yeah, because like, okay, we... these guys got their shit together. It's a yep. nice office. Yep. And dude, that is, uh, there's a lot of power in that, right? Yeah. And so it has definitely helped level us up for sure. Well, I'm gonna bring up another point here real quick that you brought up at, at dinner when, mm-hmm. we, when we went and ate dinner for, was it somebody's birthday or something when we went to Red Fort? Yeah. Was it a birthday? Kristen's. Was it Kristen's birthday? Um, somebody's birthday, but you brought up, we knew an individual that bought a jet back in the day. Mm-hmm. And when you spoke to him, what was his one, what was the one thing that he would change? Oh, that's funny, man. He came in. He came in. He came in. Uh, section and, out the boss. Yeah. So he came in and sat down and he ended up getting to the point where he was making hundreds of millions of dollars in terms of revenue, right? Yeah. And he had his own private jet and would fly around mm-hmm. to try to do business with people. Yeah. And... People tell him that story. He said, if I could do every, anything over again, I'd buy a bigger jet. <laughs> so he'd invest even more money yeah. into what most people would consider a liability. Yeah. But why would he invest into a bigger jet? He, he, no one blew him off anymore. You know what I mean? So yeah. he, he'd hit up a guy, the guy that didn't know he had a jet. <laughs> You know, and the guy, you know, would say, well, you know, send over your financials. We'll take a look. And, you know, if I'm going to do business with you, I'll reach out and blah, blah, blah. And he'd say, well, how about this, sir? Uh, you're in Kansas City. How about I'll just come over and see you today? I'll be there in two hours. Yeah. Can you do dinner tonight? I'll bring my financials with you. We'll sit down. We'll go over your financials, t- our financials together. Yeah. And then we can make a decision then. He's like, what do you mean? He's like, oh, I got a jet. I'll be there in two hours. Let's yeah. go to dinner. Clear your schedule. I'll be there. He's like, I'll call my guy right now. I'll call my pilot. We'll be, we'll be on our way. And he's like, Kel, I never one time after I said that had to get on my jet and go see that person because they say, oh, you know what? We don't need to do it. Let's go ahead and do business. And he's like, bro, I would have bought a bigger jet. And he said, I would have done exactly what you guys are doing right now is I would have been doubling down on creating more of our own, my own data, my own following, my own brand versus the way I was doing old school. But he's like, but the jet was huge, man. He's like, it's a big expense, but it's a big It closed a shit ton of deals. Yeah. And, and it helped you're mm-hmm. closing deals bringing in large amounts of revenue yeah. to get to the point where you're doing hundreds of millions of dollars yeah. a year in revenue yeah. and so like think about all of th- those things we were scared getting into the new office because mm-hmm. it's a bigger expense than what we were accustomed to yeah. you know individuals buying jets hindsight's 2020 so he wish he would have spent more money yeah. on a bigger jet or yeah i mean there's the thing, there's dude. so many things it's all perception okay it's your perception of what you're capable of because we all put limitations on ourselves, but what perception are you building for other people seeing you? Yeah, you know what I mean. When they come to our office, they see like, okay, this is no. This j- is a joke. professional. This isn't a clown show. I'm yeah. not walking into some yeah. old retail backwoods yeah. weird bullshit. You know, because I've walked office. into some offices yeah. like that. Some dude. garbage ass. You know shit. what I mean? I've walked into some weird offices where I've and, questioned and, and, things. And I was gonna say that's exactly what happens when mm-hmm. you walk into a garbage ass office. You look around, you're like, okay, well, yeah. what the fuck? 
Like yeah. they're not even inve- like you know. So you even get that impression in a crappy office. Yeah. So on the flip side, because our office is nice, people obviously have to get the. How many times have people come in and said, "Ah, oh, you guys got a nice office. I like it." Hundred percent of the time. Yeah. You know, everybody it, mentions it. Happened in our old office. Never. In our old office wasn't like ghetto. Yeah, it was. It mm. was. It was on the edge of. It was ghetto. on the lower end of middle oh, class. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hanging on by a thread on that lower end of middle class. It was, was like my childhood. It, it could, yeah, it could have been the high end of low class or the low end of middle class. Let's just say I was embarrassed yeah. Yeah. to but dude, that was, do meetings in that think office. Think about it, man. This is the, we put all it's a limits we put on ourselves, man. Yeah. Like if I was to go ask somebody right now, like, dude, bang out a hundred push-ups. It could be depending on who that person is. Yeah. That could be really hard for them. I did it this morning very easily, yeah. but it wasn't always easy. You know, and the bottom line is, is like when you do it over and over and over and over again, and you're constantly pushing yourself past that limit, a hundred's not hard anymore. Yeah. I mean, it's very easy. I could do 500 pushups right now. Then it would start getting hard. So that's yeah. hard for me. So if I keep doing it and I keep pushing past that 500, well, then 500 is going to become easy. Now yeah. I know I can push a little bit further. So a jet's very possible for us. I already know that. Yeah. It's in my visualizations every yeah. single morning. So I know that's <clears> going to be something that comes to fruition for us. We're not that far off. Yeah. But when we get a jet, it's going to be like, dude, that really wasn't that hard. Yeah. What can we get next? Yeah. Right? And it's not about getting, but it's well, about... You've got, you've got to be setting the bar. It is, getting, it is about setting the bar. And, and if you have that, that's just... I mean, some people look at it as a jet as very uh, materialistic and ego feeding the ego but let's be real if we if we get yeah. a jet and we're able just to jump on the jet and fly here 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 yeah we can go from maybe doing 10 million dollars a year in revenue to 40 million dollars yeah. in revenue within two three four years you know what i mean like and continue to set the bar but let me ask you this do you ever have you now that it's hindsight's 2020 on all of our past stuff you know we went from like a $3,000 a month office to the point where now we're spending $15,000 a month in leases or rent right now. Um, you know, we've talked about buying our own building, all that. That's all stuff that we were, you know, deciding whether we want to do in, yeah. in the near future we're and all that. Numbers on. Yeah. We're just doing it. We're yeah, just going exactly. out and like, oh, throw all your money out the window yeah. and watch what comes back. I mean, you got to be strategic and, and smart about it. You but know? have you regretted putting yourself on a, out on a limb like that. No, it, I was it, scared. It, yeah. But every but time I you I do don't that, think about it anymore. Right? Now we do it all the time. Now we're like, okay, yeah, let's invest. I don't let's even invest. Know who let's pays invest. the rent in our office. Is it Jeremy? It's automated. It's all, oh. yeah, it's like on the the banking or whatever. We just uh we auto pay. Yeah. Um so we don't have to really think about it anymore, but and we don't have to stress about it. We don't have to look at the bank account to see when rent's coming out. Yeah. You know, and I and and part of all that is because we were willing to invest, invest, invest mm-hmm. in times that were uncomfortable to invest. Yeah. Did we want to go from three thousand dollars a month to initially nine thousand? Now we're mm-hmm. up to fifteen thousand. Yeah. No, we don't. Do you really think that we enjoy spending fifteen thousand? No. That's just our current limit that we're pushing past. Just like everybody listening exactly. should be doing. What's your current limitations you're putting yourself, and what are you doing to push past them? There's always discomfort pushing past that limit that you've put on yourself, and. That's we have limitations. We, we all do. Yeah. I mean, some people listen in this and might think that we're just something special or whatever. You can label it all you want in terms of like maybe I don't I don't really feel successful. Like Not if so, yeah if somebody long way to go. yeah like if somebody says like are you I don't I mean I think that we're I'm comfortable knowing that we're on the right path to success, yeah. but I don't consider where we're at like success yeah. you know like that this isn't the end point we're gonna have to continue to get uncomfortable continue to invest mm-hmm. more money into the next greater opportunity and get out of our comfort zone yeah. and I think the problem with with a lot of people that operate businesses is you stay with inside of your comfort zone you maybe when you first start a business it's uncomfortable yeah. and then you get into day-to-day operations and then you're comfortable and you never continue to seek that discomfort that you did when you were in the startup phase, Absolutely. when you were scared and nervous, knowing that you had to try to make something work. What if you hire more employees or do, you know, there's certain pressures that you can put on yourself and apply to yourself that will force you to grow businesses. Absolutely. We were forced to grow the business by getting into an office that was much bigger than what we even needed 
it was just a nice office, yeah. but we knew we would grow into it. We grew into it and then grew out of it with inside of a three or four year time frame. Yeah. And we so put, we put a plan together to grow into that office. Yeah. We have, it's full now. Yeah. And we actually had to go down and, and get a secondary lease down the street just for our sales division. Yeah. And now we're filling that up. And so now we're talking about building a new building. Yeah. And, and it is. It, it, we, we put a plan together for future growth. We filled it. Now we're putting a new plan together for our next push of growth. The real, the real, it is uncomfortable. Dude. It is. It is. It is. It, and it's no, we, nobody, in order for us to build superhuman. a new building, we've got to put basically a million to two million dollars down without even funding. Dude, it wasn't even Not more. Than, it wasn't even more than like seven or eight years ago that we were making, you know, one hundred and fifty a year. Yeah. You know, and, and, and some of the businesses were struck. We had to build stuff back up where we were watching bank accounts very closely. I mean, it was seven or eight years ago where we went four or five months without even getting paid, yeah. you know? And then now, I mean, obviously we have a lot more consistency, but it we're not that far removed yeah. from where a lot of you guys are that are listening right now. We were where you guys are in terms of watching the bank account, wondering when that deposit's gonna hit. You know, you take on that next lease, that next, that ne whatever it is, that next expense, right. whether it's that piece of equipment, that lease, that's the, whatever yeah. it is, we are, we're not that far away from where you guys are at right now. And some of you guys may be where we're at and maybe some of you pass where we're at, but you know, in, th in this scenario, we're just talking about always staying uncomfortable, put, you know, pushing the envelope. Mm -hmm. I think people push the envelope in the beginning to go from an employee to an entrepreneur yeah. and then they just do day-to-day -day busy work and their business never grows their yeah. revenue never grows and they wonder why their company's not hitting those new levels because you're just focused on day-to-day -day operations and you're doing nothing to get uncomfortable and take that next step in your business to try to force growth because growth doesn't just sit in your lap and say hey you know I'd like to grow and give you more money it just that it doesn't work like that no, not at all you it's you growth comes out of being uncomfortable absolutely if you're lifting weights, you've got to put the heavy shit on yeah. that's uncomfortable, where yeah. your body's shaking and you're burned out. Like, that's the exact same in business where, like, again, your body might be sh not shaking, but mentally you're shaking. Yeah. And you feel the pressure. You feel the weight of trying to, to grow your business. And what do you do if you want to lift more weight? You, you push past those limitations. You, you, once it's uncomfortable and you just stop, you're going to always lift. If you're benching 200 pounds and you just lift it until you're uncomfortable and you stop because, oh, okay, I felt yeah. that you stop, well, you're going to stay lifting that weight. But in order to push past that and lift heavier weight, you've got to push one, two you more past, past your past your comfort level. Yep. And it's Increase the, the weight. The business, increase the pressure, mm -hmm. right, is what you're doing, right? Because yeah. the pressure's coming down. It, it, and those extra reps, when you don't want to do it, is increased pressure. Yeah. It's the same concept in business. You have to increase the pressure yeah. on yourself. And I think owner operators or an owner that has three, four, five employees, are you on the front lines with your employees just doing day-to-day -day work? Or are you behind the scenes trying to push and force growth with your business? Yeah. Where we're at right now, we've been very day-to-day -day in the business trying to force growth. I think we've done a good hybrid of being on the front lines and, and trying to force growth. And at this point where we're at right now, we know for a fact in order to go from 10 million to 20 million to 30 million, we cannot be in the office on a day-to-day -day basis and be on the front lines anymore. We have to actually remove ourselves, trust the staff, trust the people that we have to operate the business on the inside and we've got to be on the outside forcing growth with our companies. Yeah. So if you mow lawns, should you be mowing lawns if that's the type of business that you own? Yeah. Or should you have a staff that mows the lawns and you be knocking doors getting yeah, new accounts? You're getting more lawns. <laughs> getting more lawns, right? And and or whatever it is, right? That the you know, that's that's what I think is missing in a lot of cases. I think that you get to the point where you get so busy and you're just trying to keep up with the work that now you're just busy yeah. and you're not in a, in a phase of growing. Yeah. 
You're just kind of going through the motions. If you go to the gym and go through the motions, what happens? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing you, happens. You, you, you remain the same, yeah. which you is better than nothing. so you can maybe eat a little more yeah. calories. <laughs> yeah. It's better than nothing, yeah. right? Yeah, it's still better than nothing. Entrepreneurship and doing something for yourself <laughs> may be just better than not. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that you're getting real but growth. But you want results. Exactly. you got to push past exactly. the comfort. You know? Just, it's, it's anything. But that's what they did initially when they became an entrepreneur. They yeah. pushed past the discomfort and they exactly. got to a better situation. Yeah. Now they get to the point where they're stagnant. And, and, I'm, and, and do a little bit of self-reflection right now. Ask mm-hmm. yourself, am I really pushing my business and forcing it to grow? Or am I just showing up daily and just doing the work. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say, dude. It's like, look look at yourself, man. And, and really, remember those uncomfortable things that you did do. To get where you're at. To even get your business all launched. Yeah. To make your first sale. Yeah. To make your first, you know, client. You know, whatever it was. Like, it was probably scary and uncomfortable, but you did it because you wanted it so bad. You've probably gotten to a comfort zone if you're not growing anymore. And you need to do some self-reflection, like Travis said analyze what did i used to do what am i doing now am i staying comfortable now what can i do to raise those limits yeah if you want to go to next level that's what you want to do i want a jet dude like i want our company to be able to go close those big 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 deals deals. you know i want to be able to um throw my family on it and go wherever i want in the world yeah that's when i'll start feeling like i'm successful is when i am not controlled by money at all anymore my money is completely working for me um i have your the ability to go where I want, when I want, and it's not about ego. Some of the greatest entrepreneurs I know, personally know, have jets. We've got a few friends that have jets, mm-hmm. and dude, they're actually not egotistical at all. They're no, very humble, very but cool. they, yeah. but they're pushing themselves yeah. because that's where they're the happiest, yeah. and they want that. And that where and where did freedom we where did we, we meet some of these people <laughs> inside yeah. of networking groups that we pay for? Yeah, and that, dude, I get uncomfortable. uncomfortable. You remember, dude, I was nervous you know? when I got up and asked that question in in the. At Arte yeah, or whatever. Syndicate, uh, the syndicate, man. Syndicate, Everyone yeah. in there is millionaires, dude. Yeah, like we're probably we're some of the poorest dudes in there. Yeah. But we're putting ourselves in those rooms because those are the levels we want to be at. Yeah. I think this is a, actually it's even though we didn't know what the hell we were gonna talk about <laughs> going into it, I think this is the perfect episode. It's a very real episode. Right before twenty twenty. Yeah. I think so this too. is a week before it turns into a new year. Yeah. They can do a lot of self reflection as we've asked them to do mm-hmm. in terms of have I just been operating my business or have I been trying to grow my business? Yeah. Because you pushed yourself to the point where you got too busy yeah. and now you're just trying to keep up and that's the problem. Yeah. And it's good. I hope I want people to hear this before they start setting their goals. I have not set one goal for next year yet. Yeah. Dude. I am just like, I, dude, as you know, we're like working our ass off for next year right now. Yeah. We're putting all this content out. Um, filming all this content for our email drips. Like we're doing a lot of front loaded work that is going to go out next year. But dude, this was one of my goals this year is to get these things done in our company that yeah. we haven't done yet. Uh, but dude, I'm, I'm really excited to start setting some goals for January one. I haven't set one goal yet, uh, but I want people to hear this episode before they set their goals because we do all have to question where, what am I doing? What is my limitations yeah. before I set those goals? And, and to add to that, um, we didn't do this at home in the office because when you're at work or at home, work and home and family end up taking precedence. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to remove yourself from the noise and the day to day shit in order to really figure out how to push the limit and how to get to the next level. So what did we do? We removed ourselves from everything that we do on a day-to-day mm-hmm. basis in terms of work life, family life. And we removed, we, we went to California yep. six hours away, yeah. rented a house where there was, where it's peace and quiet and it's us to where we can actually think and we can move the needle yeah. for our business. Right. Yeah. It's hard to do that in your business. Yeah. If you want to move the needle in, for your business, in your business, for you and your family and your employees and everybody else that, that benefits from your from your company, in some cases, it's time to remove yourself from that scenario. Find and whether it's a one or two day trip right. or whatever, to where you really are alone or with your partners or whatever it is. And, and do your own mastermind. And do your own mastermind. Yeah. Almost, you know, bang out the work that you've that you've 
been putting off. Some of the best I <laughs> did. Some of the best I did. How long have we been saying, like, bro, like, we need better email drips for our clients. Oh my God. We need better tax tips all year Forever. long. And so that was yeah. the whole script was like, dude, we're going to bang all that out. We're going to mastermind as partners. We're going to, yeah. you know, we're defining roles better. We're creating new positions. Like, but yeah, you're right, dude. We had to create a different environment yep. away from all the chaos to really figure out the path. Dude, think about it. If we did it at home and we try, we're sitting in the conference room. How many people walk by the glass conference room dude, and walk in and walk in and hey, what do I do here? How do I do? You know what I mean? It's just. There's distractions at home. I don't give a shit what anybody says. Yeah. I love my wife and kids. I love everybody that, that works for us and mm -hmm. that we work with very on a day. Dude, yeah. very, and very all much very so. Supportive. Dude, I, we're, we're very lucky to be in the situation that yeah. we're in and, and uh, you know, have the people in our lives that we have. But, and I'm not saying anything negative about anybody, but sometimes you've got to remove yourself from the noise in the day-to-day yeah. -day because we might have a, a great intention going into the office guys let's get together and let's mastermind but then the day starts you know and it's shit comes up over and over and over and dude we wouldn't be able to stay focused we wouldn't be able to get as much stuff done in that type of environment so you right. need to check your environment yeah you know if you're trying to force growth and this that the other and 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 if you are a plumber if you are a lawnmower guy or a hairstylist or your barber or a whatever like you're not going to be able to force growth as you're cutting somebody's hair as you're sitting there you know the conversation needs to be there yeah so if you want something greater than what you have now i think that i think that they need to find some, some more quiet mm -hmm. and i think that they really need to do a lot of self-reflection on what their true goals are in life in general yeah do i just want to make a hundred grand a year do I want to make 200? Do I want to make four? You know, yeah. where, where do you really want to be? And then determine what it would take to get there. Like if you, if you own a, you know, a, a barber shop or whatever, and you have two people working underneath you and you make 80 grand a year. Now, if I want to make 160 grand a year, I need mm -hmm. four Bigger people. Space, I need four people yeah. underneath me, yeah. you know, and this space that I'm in will not do that. So yeah. how can I force growth? Yeah. I, then when this lease is up, I'm going to get out of my comfort zone and I may go in the negative a little bit, so to speak, not negative as in terms yeah. of in the bank account, but negative in terms of my income. I might go from 80 grand a year to the next year in terms of force and growth. And I might only make 60, but then the next year I might make a hundred yeah. and then it continues. So you've got to be willing to take a step backwards yeah, in some do. cases in order to take some steps forward. Yeah, there's always a sacrifice. <laughs> We're, we always invest. Yeah. Dude, we invest, 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 invest into us and our businesses. Mm -hmm. Like probably I would say within inside the top 5% of people that own businesses uh, invest into themselves and into their business. Oh, dude, totally. Like that's one thing that's common as we continue to level up. They never stop trying to improve themselves or their business. Exactly. And if all you're doing is showing up in your business on a day-to-day -day basis, you're the same dude or woman that showed up to your business last year. And so if you made the same amount of money in 2019 as you did in 2018 or maybe a five or 10 grand jump, the problem is not the business. The problem is you. Yep. You are not growing as an individual. Uh, therefore your business can't grow. You're the same mind in 2018, 19, and you'll be the same mind in 2020. How can you grow your business with the same mind that you have now? And the best way to do that is remove yourself from all the noise and really think about it and invest into networking groups and, and, and being around Put people that there. want to level yeah. up. So, if there's something about it, dude. Like when you're in a group of people that are all like-minded, yeah. it's like, say yes to opportunities, even when they're scary, man. Like, yeah, that's true. dude, when they, when that first event that I spoke at asked me, to, I was scared shitless, dude. I, I, dude, I still get scared of shit doing it. When I have to go jump on a stage in front of a couple yeah. other people, dude, it's weird. I still don't really feel comfortable doing yeah. that. Um, but say yes more. Like yeah. as you are networking within these groups and these opportunities present themselves, uh, no, I don't really do that. I mean, that's yeah. the kind of shit I hear yeah. all the time. Yeah. It's like, what do you mean you don't do that? You haven't you done gotta it. You've got to get in front of you, you have You want your business to grow, so yeah. dude, get on the stage. Yeah, you haven't done it. Yeah. Not that you can't do it. Yeah. You're gonna, I, I don't do that. Yeah. No, the old you don't do that. Be willing that. to get up and flop. Yeah. Be willing to get up yeah. and fail. Yeah. But if you do that over and over again, it will succeed. Guys, the message, I guess, to, to kind of bring a full circle and end, end the podcast here is just if you want more, 
take, you know, take a step back in some cases and reflect on what you really mm -hmm. want and strategize on how to get there. And even if you only have five grand in the bank account uh, for your business or two grand for your business, and there's opportunities to network or get on an airplane and fly somewhere, I'm telling you, somebody might just say that one sentence or that one paragraph that gives you a completely different mind shift yeah. or that fire, the desire that you had when you first started your business might start burning again. Yeah. That little embers in there, somebody might blow on it yeah. and start a fire again. You know what I mean? And so be willing to, to spend maybe some of the money that you don't have. And again, this is where it gets really, really sketchy. Yeah. You know, when you're advising people to spend money they don't have and this, that, the other. But, mm -hmm. I mean, you spent money you didn't first yeah. have when uh, when you invested into that little condo or whatever off of your credit card. I've got somebody messaging me DM right now applying for credit cards because of that episode. Uh-oh. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally, he owns a landscape company. So, no, that's uh, good, dude. And, but, dude, I actually would give him the same advice, bro. I mean, I still use credit cards to this day. Yeah. You know, like, it, 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 is, what it, it is. Invest. Invest into you and your business. Stop hoarding the money. St you know, be willing to, you know, go backwards, uh, you know, a time or two in order to launch your business forward. You know, there's, there's, we've been uncomfortable many, many times and we know that we're going to have to continue to get uncomfortable. Our first podcast, I mean, gosh, dang, that was uncomfortable. Yeah. But then some people say, I mean, listen to your first podcast. Did you guys do that before? Or that? No, it was... It turned out good, but that doesn't mean that we weren't scared going into it or nervous going into it, yeah. but it all t it, it'll all be fine. It'll turn out, it'll you, know? Like um, <laughs> you know? We didn't <laughs> die, but did you die, you know? <laughs> uh, no, we didn't, and, and here we are, you know, uh, affecting people yeah. in a positive way, and I think, honestly, the podcast affects us in a positive way just as much Dude, as it affects you. It's one of my favorite things to do. It, it forces us to think mm -hmm. about some of the lessons that we've that, that, that we've learned throughout yeah. entrepreneurship. It helps us reflect back on the yeah. time where it was scary to get in the new lease because we're so far removed from that. Again, like we were talking about today, the, uh, the life current drifts you away from those experiences where you forget about how you were uncomfortable in that scenario, but that was where you grew a lot, yeah. you know? And so I, I enjoy the podcast just to reflect on some of the wins that we've had, yeah. some of the scary yeah. moments. Our and, own podcast helps us. Dude. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Um, and if you guys think a podcast is going to help you, then go launch one. Yeah. You know, say yes to that opportunity. And you don't, might only have one listener for the first dude, 20 episodes, you we, know? I, every, <laughs> it just is what it is. I, I'm going to tell you this right now, unless some, maybe there's some, a few people, the one, two percent that are very egotistical. But uh, the common person, just like me and you, you know, me and Keller are common days, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're yeah, nothing, nothing special. Uh, Except I can do 500 pushups now. Yeah, I'm, I'm stuck at 499. <laughs> Kel's got me by one. Uh, but um, uh, at the end of the day, everybody, and we were guilty of this as well when we started the podcast, they don't believe that they have anything special to say that can impact other people. Like you, 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 you look at yourself and like, dude, what can I offer? Yeah. You know, like you almost, you, you're short selling show. yourself mm -hmm. by saying that. And that's exactly what we did. Like, eh, like a pot, like we could probably do it, but like, what we, would we yeah, talk about? We How would months. we, yeah, we sat on it for a minute, dude. Mm -hmm. And, and then we just, again, because of you guys, were messaging us talking about, hey, do you guys have any more content anywhere else? We decided to do a podcast to give you guys more long form content that we think could be valuable. But it was you guys helped us get us to this point yeah. in terms of even having a podcast. And now it's affecting a lot of people in a positive way. And yeah, it's, it's affecting cool. us in a positive way. So, you know, we appreciate you guys for helping us push the envelope and, and, and you know, request more information and more content. And, and, and it pushed us to the point where we, we now have this. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and step outside your comfort zone. Do shit even if you don't think that you have much to offer. Yeah. You have more to offer than I think that you even are giving yourself credit for. And the common knowledge that you think is common to you might not be common to the average person. And because we've experienced certain things, we're just like, oh yeah, I mean, that's pretty normal. Well, it might, it's might be normal for us. Yeah. It's Sometimes not normal for certain other people. Because you think, oh, that's just basic. Everybody knows it. Yeah. No, not everybody no, knows not that. Not everybody you knows know? it. Say yeah, everything. Share it. Share your you message. Know? And so, 
at the end of the day, we appreciate you guys um, so much and, and the support that you guys have given us on the Real Business Owners Instagram, Facebook page, the podcast. Yeah. It's going to be fun where where uh, Real Business Owner goes in 2020. We don't quite know. but And if you guys uh, are listening to this on Christmas, Merry Christmas because yeah. it's going to launch on Christmas. Yeah. But yeah. also going into this new year, man, it's, we, we've had such an awesome year, just these cool new experiences and, yeah. and pushing ourselves and hitting some goals that we really wanted to hit. But, you know, everybody including us and if you're listening to this really really do what trev said do some self-reflection mm. where where are you comfortable what are the limits that you're putting on yourself and what can you start doing in this next new year come 2020 to push past those limits because dude we want you guys to win so thank you guys for your support um yeah a lot of gratitude yeah sure. amen we hope you guys had a merry christmas or have a merry christmas and uh I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't <laughs> say a happy new year. I mean, yeah, we can do happy new year, but a profitable new year. Yeah. You know, that's that's probably fitting for a business owners type podcast. Yeah. Uh, stay profitable in twenty twenty. We love you guys. <laughs> we appreciate you guys. Hope you had an awesome day. Thanks.